checking with the potential challengers to President Obama in 2012. The Trump tease is taken to new heights. He's flirted with the White House runs before, but those seem more like practical jokes and serious campaigns. This time he swears it's different, telling me back in November that he's really serious this time, scheduling appearances in key campaign states. And when Ashley Banfield wangled a ride on Trump Force One, she got a whole lot more than she bargained for. And Ashley, boy, he unloaded on everything. President Obama to Charlie Sheen. Yeah, it wasn't too hard to wrangle the ride, by the way. <laughs> and what a sweet ride it was. I spent actually more than about five hours with the Donald, traveling from New York to Florida. Private 727, folks. Mm, nice ride if you can find it. We had a sweeping conversation about everything from how he would deal with Colonel Gaddafi in Libya to just how much of his own money he'd be prepared to spend on his campaign and what he thinks about Charlie Sheen. In 10 years of covering Donald Trump and two elections in which he was considering a run for the White House, this time he says it's different. Over the years, a lot of people have asked me whether or not I was going to run. They wanted me to run. But I have never been so serious as I am now. And to see how serious he is, we accompanied him on his private 727. And after a behind-the-scenes tour of this luxurious plane, one thing is clear. He certainly has the war chest to run. You'd put up $600 million for this? Absolutely, assuming I'm doing well. Do you have $600 million to I spare? Have much more than that. Part of the beauty of me is that I'm very rich. So if I need $600 million, I could put up $600 million myself. That's a huge advantage. And on the issues, he's already taking a stand, like on Libya's Colonel Gaddafi. That's a holocaust. If we could surgically strike and stop that from happening, I'd be for it, but not to get into a war. A surgical strike on Colonel Gaddafi? On Colonel Gaddafi. On piracy off the African coast. The country has never been so weak. I mean, even a thing like the pirates, they're nothing. They're nothing, Ashley. And they're taking over these huge $500 million tankers. Give me an admiral and a couple of ships. I would wipe them out of the sea so fast. He says this country's biggest problem is other countries, like China, Saudi Arabia, and North Korea, and how they affect our economy. It's very interesting. While we spend billions of dollars a week on being the policeman for the world, China's spending billions of dollars a day on taking over the world economically. That's not a good formula for us. And to that controversial question, does he believe the president was born in the USA? Everybody that even gives any hint of being a birther, a word you didn't use, even a little bit of a hint like, gee, you know, maybe, just maybe this much of a chance, they label them as an idiot. Let me tell you, I'm a really smart guy. I was a really good student at the best school in the country. The reason I have a little doubt, just a little, it's because he grew up and nobody knew him. When you interview people, if I ever got the nomination, if I ever decide to run, you may go back and interview people from my kindergarten, they'll remember me. Nobody ever comes forward. Nobody knows who he is until later in his life. It's very strange. The whole thing is very strange. So we ran through the list of possible Republican contenders and in true Trump fashion, he didn't mince words. Mitt Romney. Well, he doesn't seem to resonate. Tim Pawlenty. I don't think he's going to captivate the voters. John Huntsman. When you work for somebody else, as he has worked for Barack Obama, you don't then leave and run against that person. It's very disloyal. Mike Huckabee. I really like him. He's the kind of a guy that maybe could really get some votes. Sarah Palin. She did fine as the governor. I think personally she made a, a tragic mistake when she left early. I think she's more qualified than Barack Obama was when he became president. Newt Gingrich. You know why I like Gingrich? She just joined my club in Washington. I'm very happy. They're all good men, but you need somebody that's going to beat Barack Obama. You need somebody that's going to knock out Obamacare. And what about other leaders in the Republican Party, like Speaker John Boehner? I don't like the crying. I've spent my whole life chasing the American dream. I do not like it. I don't understand it. I really like him as a person. I think the crying is an emotional thing that, frankly, probably makes him a very nice man. But, you know, I don't like to see it in a leader. On Celebrity Apprentice, we have Meatloaf. And Meatloaf cries. I mean, sobbing uncontrollably. I don't understand it. Trump also weighed in on the latest Hollywood showdown involving Charlie Sheen. Well, I know Charlie Sheen. Um, he married Brooke who's a member 
of Mar-a-Lago. The parents are members of Mar-a-Lago. And I've gotten to know Charlie Sheen because of Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida. Brooke is from Palm Beach. And I told the parents, don't let your daughter marry him. I think he's wonderful, but he's a disaster. Don't let your daughter marry him. And after we landed in Palm Beach, Trump invited us for a rare look at his private club Mar-a-Lago, where just about everything appears to be lined with gold. How does Melania feel about this idea of you running? She loves this country and she feels that it's doing very poorly and it's not going to do much better if it does better at all. And I think she might put that ahead of her personal feeling. Would she like to remain just private? She's a very private person. I think so. But I think she puts the country first. So would you redecorate the Oval Office? It would not be a priority, believe me. My priority is to redecorate the United States. <laughs> In other words, to get it going again, because that's what we need. I mean, we need roads, we need infrastructure, we need things like other countries are doing with our money. And I do want to note, uh, very importantly, that our conversation happened just hours before the tsunami hit Japan, but he has since told me that while most people think a rich nation like Japan doesn't need technical or financial support, he says they need us more than ever right now. And he also says if he doesn't clinch the Republican nomination, you ready? Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> He'll consider running as an independent. Well, there we go. He's already jumping ahead to the general election. Yeah. We, we, we put a couple of your clips up on Facebook last mm -hmm. night, got a huge reaction, and, and it's clear you know, Donald Trump is, is an irresistible personality, successful businessman, and we were talking about this before. I still have a hard time seeing him really getting into this race for president, but you kind of buy it. I am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I've known him for a long time, and I know that the last two rounds, was it 88, he wasn't as serious, and it, some people say it was a big publicity stunt. This time I really do think he's serious. I think he really wants to go for the gusto. And you saw him reaching out for a lot of that uh, Tea Party support, wading into the birther controversy as well. He says they're the party of common sense. He loves the Tea Party. Okay, Ashley Banfield, thanks very much. You can see a lot more of Ashley's interview up on our website at abcnews.com slash GMA.